Nightmares is Nikoi Nightmare, and I don't know how good this is gonna go because I had to delete so much off my phone and then pay for extra storage because how big my videos are. So I don't know how good this is gonna go because I had to get a new video editor too. So I'm. I, I, mm. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, this is another dreary story. Um, last time I did a dreary story, I had to cut out a lot because we had some inappropriate jokes. Thank you, Luna, <laughs> for that. Oh, man, was it inappropriate. Oh, I feel so bad because it was so bad. <laughs> uh, happy Wednesday. Uh, no. Why do I think it's Wednesday? Oh, my goodness. Okay, happy Friday. That's it. Happy Friday. I hope everyone's doing good. How's the kids? Like you have kids, but maybe you do. I'm not judging. Literally can't speak English. Um, we're on chapter six. I just made Mexican food, so it smells delicious right now. <laughs> um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Yeah, the daily profit and insults. Yay, we love that. I'm going to finish this fanfic soon. What? Prob's going to make a sequel, but the updates will be, like, every other day since school is starting up. Alex. But, like, one thing, though, is that this has how many parts? 36? And we're only on six. So I don't know how you're going to finish this up. <laughs> hmm. The next morning, Harry and Draco woke up in each other's arms. Draco didn't really know how to react, so he just laid there in, until Harry woke up. Thankfully, Harry woke up soon after. Are you already awake? Harry asked, groggily. Yeah, I didn't want to wake you up, and you had your arms around me, Draco said. Harry tightened his grip and put his face in Draco's hair. Good, I don't want to get up yet, Harry said. Draco took a glance at the clock. We really need to get up or we're going to be late, Draco said. Harry whined and held Draco tighter. Draco pu started to push Harry away. No, I'm not going to be late. Get your lazy butt up or you'll miss the daily profit, Draco said sternly. Harry grumbled but reluctantly let go and sat up. The two started their normal routine and started to head to the dining hall. While walking down the hall, Harry reached over and grabbed Draco's hand, holding it in his own. Soon they approached a group of students, and they watched as Her Harry and Draco walked down the hall. Harry with a dumb grin, and <laughs> Draco with a red face. Just before they reached the dining hall, someone called out. Harry and, Dra um, Harry and Draco looked back and saw it was a sixth year. She was a Hufflepuff. Can't you see it? Malfoy has poisoned you! <laughs> I'm sorry how I said that. <laughs> I cringed, like, when I said it. She yelled. Harry smiled at her and started to walk away. As he walked away, he said, M I may love to shop, but I'm not buying your bull. <laughs> oh, shit. Woo. Nice one, Harry. I, would, I, I wish I came up with that kind of stuff. Man, I'm not that witty. Harry echoed down the hall. The two entered the dining hall and, and joined the group. Hey, guys, Harry gr greeted happily. Draco greeted them as well. Everyone started to eat. Um, to eat. Know that everyone was... To know that everyone was together. It seemed to be a tradition, and they all started to share gradually. Everyone would wait until everyone had arrived at the table to start eating. Everyone finished breakfast early and started started um start stayed around to chat a little midway through harry and neville's conversation on wolfsbane a brunette seventh year slytherin walked up to draco how could you do this draco how could you even ever like a guy like him he's disgusting your father would never approve she scolded she completely ignored harry harry's blood was boiling he was about to say something when draco laid a Hand, um, a hand on him to stop him. Draco faked a smile. Ah, it's so cute that 
when you try to talk about things you don't understand, like love, Draco said. She was about to speak, but Draco cut her off. Don't waste your breath. You'll need it to blow up, blow up your date. Draco finished. She looked like she was about to cry. She ran, started to run <clears throat> run to the dining hall door to leave. Draco stood up and cupped, um, cupped around his mouth and called out, Make sure to let the door hit you on the way out. At least then you'll go from a one to a two out of ten. Shit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Where do they come up with these? I need to be better at insults. He said loud enough for her to hear. She finally left the room. Draco sat back down and looked at the group. They didn't have any expression. Draco started to get nervous. Did he go too far? Suddenly, Neville cracked a smile. Then Luna, all of a sudden, start, uh, everyone bursted out la- uh, laughing from trying to keep a straight face. Draco looked around and, was, and relaxed. I think it was the perfect amount of bitchiness, Harry laughed. Who was she anyways, he asked. She's, she's a seventh-year Slytherin. No one usually sees her since she sleeps in the Hufflepuff Tower with her sister. She's a real monster. She tried to convince um, the Dolores to burn the dungeons while everyone else was locked inside. Draco said, said with a disgusted look. Everyone just kind of laughed awkwardly. Owl started to fly into the dining hall and deliver mail. Six copies of the Daily Prophet dropped on the table. Everyone grabbed one and started to read. There on the top, on the front pa- uh, page, was Rita Skeeter's face in the Azkaban uniform. The headline read, Rita Skeeter is undocumented. Everyone read the article down below. Rita Skeeter is actually an undocumented animagus she, uh, who cheats her viewers. After an anonymous tipper who were given uh, pictures of a golden beetle with red lines around the eyes to get to look like glasses. The anonymous tipper accused Rita Rita of being a beetle anonymous. She was immediately put on trial for the suspicion of being an anonymous. Anonymix. Migs. I can't say it. <laughs> um, she was forced verticerum after which she spilled the, all the truth. She claimed she was the beetle, uh, the beetle in the photo. What she said after that will shock you. She said, I use a quick quill to write my stories. I claimed it with, uh, I charmed it with a, with a homemade spell so it would increasingly embellish as it wrote. Most of the facts I gather are uh, tempered with misguiding and sometimes made up. I was paid by Lucius Malfoy to extremely embellish every article I wrote about Harry Potter and made everything seem worse than everything was um, was fine and make things seem fine when everything was worse. I am completely appalled by the news and I, uh, I hope you are. There is certainly a job hole, and anyone is interested, please contact the Daily Prophet if you want to become the front page writer. Hermione was giggling with like mad, and everyone was uh, smiling happily. Rita isn't going going to get a lot of good treatment in Azkaban after Sirius Black's escape. The Ministry has been cracking down on every. Unregistered, I'm not, um, anonymous. I can't say it right. I'm sorry. It's the, it's my, um, my tongue and how I say things. Neville commented. Everyone, everyone gathered their, uh, their things and left for classes. The day went fine, smooth, fine and smoothly. A couple rumors spread around that Draco made a girl cry, but so did Harry, although for different reasons. That day, everyone had a free period after dinner. 
The teachers decided to give everyone a little extra time to study for their mid-year exams. Wait, it's already mid-year? Holy crap! (laughs) Time goes way too fast for me. (laughs) While everyone else was stuck in their common rooms studying, Harry, Harry, Neville, Draco, and Luna walked around the lake. Hermione and Ron were left in the common room to study, since Hermione didn't want to miss out, and Ron needed it severely. Harry and Neville casted a feather light charm on Luna and Draco, and they were um, gi- uh, giving each other piggyback rides around the lake. Harry carried Draco, and Lu- Neville carried Luna. The four talked and chatted, laughed and in each other's company. Have you thought about what job you're going to get? Luna asked Neville in, in her dreamy voice. She currently had her um, nargle f- finding glasses uh, glasses on probably hunting for nargles. Huh? Oh, okay. So she had her own type of Nargle glasses on as she was reading something for nar- to find Nargles. Okay, got it. <laughs> it was just like, whoo, over my head. I, I didn't understand that for a second. I think I'm going to apply for herbology position. I, I was talking to Professor Sprout, and she said she was going to retire after this year. She said she would... Put me in, put in a good word for me, Neville answered cheerily. Neville showed some extraordinary talent with plants, and everyone knew it. What about you, Draco? Luna asked. I don't think I'm going to get a conventional job. I like to work from home. I've got multiple gardens filled with rare potion ingredients that I can grow and sell. I could find a store that I can sell to sell it to, Draco said. He looked at Harry. What about you? he asked. Harry thought a little. I still don't know. I've got job offers up the ass, and, but I'm not really interested in many of them. Some seem cool, but I don't think they'd work out, Harry said. Draco laughed a little when Draco finished. I mean, Harry finished, sorry. What's so funny? Harry asked him. Draco just smiled. I had a funny idea. Don't worry it, it, about it. It's stupid. Harry dismissed. Harry smi- um, squeezed Draco's thighs. Whoa. <laughs> Since he was holding on them, onto them. Tell me, he said. Draco giggled again. When you said that the first thing said that, the first thing that popped into my head was you owning a potion store. I supp- I supplied the plants while you sold them to people, Draco laughed. Funny concept, really. Harry smiled. How about I just do that? I could just, just start my own business and you can be my supplier, Harry said amused. They all laughed at, at the idea. The chosen boy working at, in a small garden shop for a living? That was so laughable. Once the sun started to set, everyone headed to the dining hall to eat with the others. Everyone finished and headed to the common rooms to finish any homework or studying. Before they went to bed, how how about we extend the bed? It, it, it gets really crowded, Harry suggested. Draco walked out of the bathroom while towel, towel drying his hair. You plan on sleeping in my bed tonight? Why, of course, anything for my love, Harry Harry said, as he took a deep, um, exaggerated bow. Draco blushed and shot a charm that extended the bed from a day bed to a queen. After Draco dried his hair, he, he joined Harry under the covers. Harry immediately wrapped his arms around Draco and pulled him closer. Um tip for your hair never towel dry it because it breaks off your hair very easily and for people like with curly hair or really damaged hair that from bleaching or dyeing or anything it makes your hair very very uh weak even more weak than it already is and it will break off 
So never towel dry like you can dab it, but never like do what the guys do. Like they, like they, like uh, what was it? They ruffle their hair with the towel. Never do that. That will hurt the bonds in your hair. Um, best way to do it is just put on a um, a nice uh, cool dry of uh, from the blower, and with the and with the right attachment too. That was just a piece of wisdom I found out when I was um about my hair because my hair was so porous and yeah after <laughs> after Jake yeah mm-hmm. you know you're going to have to tell the Weasleys eventually that we are a thing of sorts. I'm going to have to tell my mother as well. Draco said quietly. Harry nodded and kissed his head. We will. Good night, Draco. Harry said. Good night, Harry. Draco yawned. Good shit. That's some good shit. Mm-mm-mm-mm. I'm sorry. I had to. I had to make that. 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 Uh, <laughs> what was it? It was that a meme or something? I thought it was a a vine, but maybe it isn't. I don't know where it came from. I love this fix so much. OMG, so much better than my recent one. Wow, Alex, don't sell yourself short. It's pretty good. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know what I mean. Um, sorry, there's an ad that's making me pissed off a little bit. Okay, right, anyways, family dinner and invitation. An invitation. <laughs> Omg. So much anxiety going into into this a chapter. Good anxiety, though, so don't worry. <laughs> From Alex. It has been a couple months since when everyone was getting along. Neville finally asked Luna on a proper date, and Harry finally asked Draco to become his boyfriend. Officially, I'm guessing. Everyone knew Hermione and Ron were together in some way, but he hadn't asked her properly to become his girlfriend. So they have a thing, but they haven't officially yeah i know what i know what they're talking about they have a thing but they haven't made it official if you know what i'm talking about (laughs) it's just a thing ron was finally allowed to change his hair back to normal everyone was currently on the train back for christmas break harry draco hermione and ron all shared a compartment while dean seamus neville and luna shared one Hermione and Ron sat on one side while Draco and Harry sat on the other. Harry, uh, you really need to tell Mum about Draco, Ron commented. Hermione nodded her head. She shouldn't really know, Harry. You can't hide it from her for long, Hermione added. Draco nodded in agreement. I already told my mom and she's thrilled. Yeah, because I think um, you can tell in... um. Harry Potter that um, um, someone said Nissy is her nickname or something. Um, she or Narcissa is actually um, really fond of Harry Potter a lot. Like she's not like she doesn't hate him or anything like that. She actually really does like Harry Potter in the movies. I don't know about the the, the books or anything, but. In the movie, she really liked him, so I guess I'm not too sure. (laughs) Maybe the Weasleys could come over for Christmas Eve dinner. My mother has been doing so so much, some remodeling. The manor is a lot more friendlier, Draco said. Harry thought and turned her on. Did Molly and um, Arthur read the article Rita, Rita Skeeter wrote? Harry asked Ron, and Ron shook his head. Mom hasn't been getting any newspapers since we rebuilt the house, and Dad gave up his paper for me. We all only get enough money for two papers, so they gave me one to me and Ginny at when the school year started. Ron answered. Harry started. Uh, Harry sighed. That's good. I wanted to tell them so they don't find out through the paper, Harry said. He leaned his head head on Draco's shoulder. How am I going to tell them Lucius did some terrible things to me, to them? 
and I don't know if they would accept this, Harry said, motioning between them both. It doesn't matter what happened before. You need to tell her. I don't, I won't go on a date, I won't go on dating you if you don't tell her this. Tell her this break. Draco said. Harry nodded. If it's okay with Narcissa, I could ask the Weasleys to come over. uh, Harry reasoned. Mother is fine with it. She was the one who suggested it in the first place, Draco assured. As you can tell, like in the movies, Narcissa was actually very, very kind and really, really sweet. And I was just like, why the hell is she with this dude? She must be really in love with him or really just love Draco. <laughs> because he's like a piece of crap sometimes. I. But she's... Ab- I don't think you ever hate Narcissa. Ever. In the Harry Potter series. I never hated her. Which kind of is weird because you always vote for Harry Potter's side. But... Hmm. <laughs> Harry, uh, Draco sh- assured him. The two spent the rest of the ride talking and eating sweets from the trolley. <sighs> the train stopped and everyone exited the flow back home. The we- Weasleys decided to let Ron, Ginny, and Harry flow home themselves since there wasn't any danger surrounding them. Draco met with his mother and they both dis- uh, disappeared back home. The three walked into the public flow and got home in seconds we're home Ginny announced everyone carried their luggage out to the out of the flow molly came out of the kitchen to greet them i've seen i haven't seen you for so long come here she smiled happily the three joined her in one big hug it's great to be back molly Harry said happily. They levitated their bags up the stairs and into their rooms. Harry brought his luggage into his, their room and Draco followed after. So when are you going to tell them? Ron asked as they packed, unpacked. I think I'll tell them tonight during dinner. The, that way everyone is all together and I can explain. Harry said ner- nervously. The two finished packing, uh, um, unpacking <laughs> and greeted the the others downstairs. Arthur came back from work and greeted everyone. Molly was starting dinner when Harry poked his head around the door. Would you like me to help you cook? Harry offered. Molly turned and nodded. Of course. Usually people don't help, so it would be nice to have some company when I cook, she said, and she gave Harry the vegetables to cut um and a cutting board, and a knife. She then um, tied a pink apron on to Harry. You don't want to get any stains on stains now, do you? Molly teased. Harry gladly wore, wore the apron. I'm making a stew, so I'll need you to dice them those up for me and put them in the pot, she said cheerily. She started, uh, she started with the, with the meat and used the magic to tenderize all the meat. Her pocket, uh, her pocket, um, Harry pocketed his wand, took the knife, and started to dice the vegetables. Harry looked at him confused. Aren't you using magic? she asked. Harry looked at her and, at her and laughed ner- nervously. When I cook, I never used magic. I'm... I'm not sure how to use magic to dice the vegetables, he said awkwardly. Molly rose, uh, rose her brow. You cooked before? When? She, she asked curiously. Harry decided to talk and dice the food. When I lived with the Dursleys, I cooked for them. I learned how to cook, make breakfast, lunch, and dinner by the time I was eight. Harry said, Harry answered, how come you started cooking at such a young age? Molly asked. She had an idea as to why, but she wanted Harry to tell her. Well, Aunt Petunia wanted more time with her friends, so she put 
on a cooking show for me to watch, and she left the house. By the time she came home, I learned roughly how to cook. I just practiced a little, and soon I was making all the meals in the house. She only made snacks for Dudley and Uncle Vernon when they wanted, and the food when someone important came over. Harry answer, um, answered duly. He never, he ne- uh, he never really went to the depth with Molly the, and the others what had happened to the Dursleys except for Ron. Everyone, everyone else just knew he didn't eat much when he was there. That's Petri- um, Petru- Petrid? No, Putrid. I'm sorry, I can't read. <laughs> That's Putrid. They're Putrid. To make a small boy come become their maid at such a young age. That's disgusting, she said. Harry finished cutting all the vegetables and she placed them he placed them in the pot. Molly finished tenderizing meat and she boiled it with the veggie veggies. The veggies. <laughs> Once everything was done cooking, Harry helped Molly pour the soup for everyone at the table. It's stew, not soup. Sorry. <laughs> there's a difference. There's soup, which is mostly broth. And then there's stew, which is mostly meats and veggies, and that's the stuff I like. I'm not a big broth person, I guess, um, because I want to eat my substance, I guess. I guess. <laughs> Dinner is done, Harry shouted. Everyone started to file into the dining room and sit down. Of course, Harry was still wearing the apron, so he got a couple of laughs out of it. When George walked into the dining room, he la- uh, smiled and lightly chuckled. That color suits you, he joked slightly. Harry smiled happily. He was glad he was able to amuse George a little. Harry took the apron off and joined the others at the table. Everyone went by sm- everything went by so s- smoothly s- by smoothly so far. They all talked about what was going on. Arthur had gotten a promotion for being in the informa- for bringing in the information on Rita Rita Skeeter. Ron took glances at Harry trying to get him to bring up Draco. I would kick him in the leg if he keeps on ignoring it. I <laughs> I would be so irked because we're on that subject. Ron tried, but Harry didn't acknowledge him. Harry was fed up. Ron was fed up and spoke up. Harry has something has something he wants to tell you all, don't you, Harry? Ron said. Harry gave Ron a look, but started to tell them. Oh, um, okay, so well, I've been dating someone for a while so now, and I wanted to you to meet them. Their mother invited us all over to their place for a Christmas Eve dinner. Harry said nervously. Arthur, um, Arthur and Molly smiled happily. Oh, that's great. Who is she? What house is she from? <clears throat> Molly, <laughs> I'm feeling the nervousness. <laughs> Molly asked excitedly. Harry laughed and scratched his head awkwardly. Um... Well, you see, I'm not really dating a girl, Harry said slowly. He he didn't make eye contact with others. Ma- uh, Molly ha- made an O with her mouth. Oh, well, that's all right. Who is he? Then she asked, well, he's from Slytherin, Harry, <laughs> Harry said slowly. Uh, Arthur nodded. That's... That's all right. Not everyone from Slytherin is evil. There are plenty of nice people from Slytherin, Arthur (laughs) smiled. So what's his name? He asked. Ron watched anxiously. Before I tell you his, um, his name, I wanted to warn you. He's considered evil, but he actually isn't. His father has just pushed him a lot to be bad. His father was a Death Eater, but he was sent to Azkaban after he left. My 
boyfriend has been able to be who he wants to be. He's really nice, Harry said. Everyone kind of stopped moving. <laughs> Ginny, of course, knew who it was, and she was just a bit nervous to see how the others reacted. Harry, you're avoiding the question, who are you dating? George asked. Harry had no more material to procrastinate with. He had to tell them. I'm dating, um, Draco Malfoy, Harry admitted. Arthur and Molly looked at him in shock. George kind of just sat there. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you can surprise George or Fred. I, I mean, well, Fred's not there, but I mean, those two, like, no shit beyond compare. So I'm pretty sure, like, he was just waiting to hear it, but he wasn't surprised. Do you know what I mean? He's just, um, oh, I didn't think I was going to hear that now, but mm. George just sat there. Thankfully, Ron interjected. Really, he's changed dramatically. I, I've seen Harry and him. They bloody love each other. Draco does everything he can to protect Harry, and Harry can does, <laughs> does everything he can protect Draco. They're a very cute couple. I've been. I, I've even become friends, with, good friends with the bloke. His mother is also a wonderful woman. Draco told his uh, mother very recently through letter. She is thrilled. She wanted us all to come over f to have dinner with them. <laughs> Ron hurriedly explained. Ginny decided to step in as well. <laughs> this is when your friends are trying to like, uh, uh, it's not a bad thing, it's not a bad thing, we swear. <laughs> Although I don't see Harry as much anymore because of new dorms, I even, I even see them walking to class together and going on Hogsmeade dates together. They all, they are really close, and Harry has become much more lively and happy since he's been with Draco. She added, Molly and Arthur <laughs> were still silent. I think that they're still in shock, because um, the problem, it's not like it's a bad thing, they just didn't expect it. I think they're very more accepting people than a lot of people think they are. They are, um, they, they were so thinking very hard by the by the looks of it. George spoke up. I think it's great that Draco finally changed. I bet his father was a real a real drag on him. I mean, I could never imagine how having a to live with a father who was a death eater. It must have been difficult. I glad I'm glad you found someone you enjoy to be around and that you're happy again, George told Harry. Harry smiled at George who for ex his acceptance. All that was left was Molly and Arthur. Molly spoke up first. Um, I'd like to understand Draco, I guess. I, I haven't really talked to him before, but I have run into his family, his father, before. And I remember that you and Ron spoke badly of Draco in the past. Can you explain that? Explain it for me and Arthur, Molly asked. She had very mixed emotions on this. On one hand, she was happy that Harry was happy, but on the other hand, he was dating an ex-death eater of the father that ruined their lives. Harry sh uh, shakily took a breath. <sighs> well, you remember when I came home from shopping, I told you Draco apologized? He was really sincere, and he was ha happy his father was locked up. And, well, when we were on the train, no one would let him sit with in, in any of the compartments, so I let him sit with us. He didn't say anything ne negative. He just sat there, read his book, and he was really scared to be back at Hogwarts. I offered to escort him to school since he was getting beat up. Then I asked if he wanted to sit with us at the table, and, of course, there was a new dorm system, and... He had no other friends in seventh year. So I offered him to room with me. We talked a little and he explained everything for, uh, for me. His father, Lucius, didn't like really like him and wanted him to be him as an heir to keep his father family pure blood. Lucius just brainwashed his, him as a child and everything other than pure blood is scum and, pu uh, and poor people are scum. I mean, imagine growing up with that mentality. 
any kid would become the way he did, Harry said. He took a breath and continued. His father forced the dark mark onto him and set him over the set him over the edge, and Draco started to hate him. A lot. After I saved him from the fire, he realized everything his father told him was wrong. The way he came to me to apologize, he was truly sorry for everything. He also told me his mother never wanted to marry Lucius. She just need, uh, did so, um, did so, so uh, since her parents arranged the marriage. Now that Lucius is gone, she and Draco are a lot happier. Narcissa even finished the remodeling of their manor. She didn't, uh, she didn't like how Lucius designed it. It was too dark. So even, so she even told Draco to, uh, to be with whoever he wants to be with, even if it was a muggle. Harry said he let that all sink in for a moment. I hope you accept him. I really do love him. Being with him makes me. The happiest I've ever been. He's kind and caring. He's always thought about me before himself, even when he should have been thinking of himself. Harry told them. Arthur cleared his throat. I think we should definitely spend Christmas Eve dinner with them. It would be nice to to see him, meet him in a new a uh, new light and meet Narcissa. Arthur said. Right, Molly? He said, looking at her. I think we would spare one night. We can all go and meet them. Molly said on ease. Harry smiled. Thank you. It would be great for you to meet Narcissa. I respect her a lot. Harry thanked them. They all continued dinner in relative, relative silence. When everyone finished, Molly cleared the table and cleaned the dishes. Harry and Ron went to their room while George, Ginny, and Arthur stayed in the living room and read the newspaper and any book they liked. I'm happy for you, Harry, and they, and you should be as well, Ginny said casually. They're a match made by death, the perfect couple, she said. George nodded his head. He seems very happy with him. You notice his enthusiasm when he came, come, uh, when he ca uh, came, he came earlier today. Usually he just says hi and leaves, George added. Arthur uh, um, agreed. Harry and Ron on their, um, sat on their beds and talked. Does Errol Ir still fly and send letters? Harry asked Ron. He does, although he tr um, we try n not to use him as much, Ron an um, answered. Harry got up from his bed and sat down at the desk they shared. Where's Hermione? I, I just noticed that. Where's Hermione? They never told her where she went. I'm so confused. Where did Hermione go? Where did Neville go? Where did Luna go? <laughs> now I'm... Exp I'm... I'm, I'm mm. <laughs> Although we try to, um, Her Ron answered. Harry got up from his bed and sat down on, at the desk and they shared. Would you mind if I sent a letter to Draco to tell, uh, to expect us on Christmas Eve? Harry asked. Ron shook his head. Go ahead, mate. He's all yours, Ron said. Harry wrote down a quick letter f for Draco and gave it to Erol. From from his little house in the backyard, it rolled, tr tumbled through the window, and took Harry's letter. Send this to Draco Malfoy at the Malfoy Manor. Harry told Erol, and Erol flew off, uh, flew to deliver the letter. Now we wait, Harry said tiredly. He climbed into bed and turned the lights off, out. Ron went to bed as well. <laughs> Alex, yo! I'm so excited. I give, I give myself anxiety for the next chapter. Uh oh. I hope it's good anxiety. Oh no. The Christmas dinner with the Malfoys. Yo yo yo! Just reminding you that I'm ending this story soon. The sequel will probably have some children in it. So yeah, dabs. <laughs> 
Oh no! How old is this? Please don't tell me this is 2000 and... Oh gosh, it's 2017. <laughs> so four years ago. Wow. It was Christmas Eve day. Harry... Ha- um, hey, it's Christmas in spring. Or if you want to say summer. summer. It was Christmas Eve day. Harry headed out, headed to Di- Di- um, Diagon Alley. Yes! Sorry. I get so hyped when I can say it right. So he could get Draco a Christmas present. Everyone else was already, has, was already bought for. Harry had tied his hair into a bun and, and set out. He looked around until he found a store hidden in the alley called Hearts, the Heart's Desire. We have a Heart's Desire in Winona. You should try that. There, it's a really expensive place, though. And an ex-friend of mine stole there, so I don't know if they associate with me being a thief. But, but it's a really expensive place and beautiful, too. So if you ever in Winona, Minnesota, go check it out. It's very pretty. Harry entered the shop and greeted the owner. She was an older-looking woman. Hey, hello there. What can I help you with? She said. Harry didn't think she had the best vision. She wore the extremely thick glasses. I'm looking to get my boyfriend something for Christmas, but I don't know what to get him, Harry told her. The lady looked at the display and pulled three sets out for her, for him. I think any of these three would be a, would be perfect. Harry said the three, the first one was a matching silver chain bracelet with one of the bracelets had a key and the other had a lock. The second set were two silver bands. One that had an emerald stone and the other one had a burgundy stone. The third set had two gold chain necklaces. One had a hollow circle and the other one had a filled circle. The first set was charmed to bring the wearer power. When the um, when one has the key to lock uh, to the lock the pow- uh, they have the power to open it, she explained. The second set represents rebirth. When the stones touch each other, touch, uh, touch together, you and your partner will feel renewed and filled with energy, she said. And the second set has a hand, um, handmade chain that I ma- added myself. When, I, uh, when you bring the two pendants together, they lock together and make a full circle. It makes it means that you when you are brought together, you become one. You become invincible to all harm because you are with the other. She explained, Harry looked at the sets individually. The bracelets were nice, but he didn't feel like he, he and Draco would rely on bracelet for power. The rings looked cool, but he thought they were too intimate. The, the third set was by far Harry's favorite. He pointed to the necklaces. I'll take those, Harry decided. He paid the lady and left the shop. When Harry got home, he immediately started to get ready for the dinner. Her- Hermione came over a few couple... Where the frig did you go? Sorry. I was so confused. Like, I was like, where did Luna, <laughs> where did all her, their friends go? Like, you never talked, like, if they got off, they just disappeared, you know? <laughs> Hermione came over a couple minutes before they all left. Harry invited her over since she was also friends with Draco. Everyone ready? Arthur asked. They all dressed nice. Arthur wore a simple black suit with a white but um with a white button up and a burgundy vest hmm that would actually kind of look nice um molly wore a long sleeve sunflower dress that uh she made a while ago Ginny wore a spaghetti strap 
turquoise dress. Are you going to a um a wedding or are you going to Christmas dinner? Because this does not look like Christmas at all. I'm just asking because you either wear a Christmas type of dress or you just wear Christmas themed clothes, not summer clothes. That's my question. Um, George wore a black suit similar to Arthur's with just a button-up, white button-up. Hermione wore a blue ruffled knee-length dress. Ron wore some dressy pants and a white button-up and a black bow tie. Ooh, bow tie. Yeah, I think he would look better on a bow tie than a tie tie. And a navy blue blazer. Ooh. Huh. Yeah, it's Weasley. <laughs> Let's go, Hermione. Um, Harry smiled happily. Everyone filed one by one and flewed, uh, flewed, flewed. <laughs> Never thought I would say that. Flewed in a group of three, then a group of four. Everyone, when everyone got to the uh, Malfoy Manor, Narcissa and Draco uh, greeted them. Oh, hello! It's so nice to meet you! And and have you over? Narcissa greeted happily. She shook everyone's hand. She wore a red pencil dress and let, and let her hair down. Oh, her hair must be so pretty. I'm sorry, but in the movies, she was portrayed as a very beautiful woman. So I always thought of Narcissa would be a beautiful um, blonde woman. That looks a little bit aged, but aged beautifully kind of way. That's what I always imagined Narcissa. She shook every... Um, uh, yeah. She, uh, when she got to Harry, she gave, him a bi- she gave him a big smile and pulled him into a hug. It's so nice to properly meet you, Harry, she said. Harry happily hugged her back. Thank you so much for allowing us to come over. I, ho- I love what you've done with the place. Harry complimented. The room was lit up with light and everything was white and gray with dark green accents. Ooh. Ooh. I kind of like that. Hold on. (laughs) I want that to be my house a little bit too. Overall, the room was pretty much cheerful. Much cheerful place. Draco greeted the family. It's so nice to have you here. (laughs) Draco greeted nervously. He shook everyone's hand except for... Harry, Ron, and Hermione. He gave them all hugs. I'm sorry, my co- my alarm for my clothing class came up back on. It was so rude. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, Draco told Harry. Harry smiled and gave Draco a quick kiss on the lips. Thank you for having us over. He thanked Narcissa. He thanked Narcissa. Got the attention of the group. If you could please follow me to the dining hall, Narcissa directed. Molly and Arthur were easing up. She uh, she seemed like a very nice woman. And she obviously changed a lot since the weight of Lucius was taken off of her shoulders. Everyone followed, followed her to a big room with a large table already set up. Narcissa sat at the head while everyone found a place. Molly and Arthur sat on Narcissa's left while... Harry and Draco sat on Narcissa's right. Hermione and Ron sat together next to Harry, and George and Ginny sat next to Arthur. Narcissa took her um, wand and pointed it at uh, Ginny's plate. Food appeared on the plate. She did the same to everyone else's plate when she lastly, lastly her own, and pointed to the wine bottle and levitated it to out of the ice bucket. Would you like some wine? She offered. Everyone nodded their head, except for Ginny and George. (laughs) Yes, please. (laughs) I'm not much of a drinker myself, was George's excuse. Ginny couldn't simply because she was underage. Everyone else, though, got the goblet of wine. Wait, is the age of drinking 18 or 17? Huh, I didn't know that. I guess the UK is very different because I wish that's how it worked here because we can go to war and people on base, army bases, can drink and smoke. Out of army bases, 
you have to be 21 to be drinking and 21 to be smoking, which really sucks because you can die for your country, but you can't smoke or drink. Sometimes I want to smoke and drink because of the freaking wars we go through. Ugh, all the fighting. Just don't get it. Um, they all thanked her. Narcissa grabbed her fork and knife. Please dig in. I made it myself, she said. She started to eat her food. Ron made sure the f- to eat before he came over. He didn't want to look like a slob in front of Narcissa. He ate his food at the same pace as, uh, as everyone else. The f- room was overall, overall quiet. Just the clanking of silverware. Narcissa tried to break the silence. Mr. Weasley, I heard you were the one who brought the evidence of Rita Skeeter. How did you figure it out? She asked. Arthur wiped his mouth. Actually, I didn't provide the evidence. An anonymous tipper sent it to me through a school owl. Probably this a student from Hogwarts, although I don't know who they are. Arthur answered immediately, Harry, Ron, Harry, Draco, Hermione, and Ron cracked a smile. Narcissa noticed and asked them, Do you know who sent the letter, Harry? Narcissa asked, and he, la- he laughed lightly. I do, although it's not my place to tell who did it, Harry told her. Narcissa respected that and, and, and continued to eat. The dinner's quite tasty. You cooked this yourself? Molly asked. Narcissa nodded. That and with a little help from Draco, she answered. Hermione took a break of silence again. Miss Malfoy, I heard you took Dolores' umbrage's spot in the... Oh my gosh. Was I not ma... Ma... <laughs> was was I not ma... I think that's how you say it. I can't say it because my nose is plugged. <laughs> what do you usually do now that you have that position. Hermione asked. She wasn't nervous at all. She looked a a cool he- she kept a cool head. It's rather boring. I just sat I just sit around in uncomfortable robes and say yes yay or nay to new laws. We managed to pa- um we managed to pass an a law that makes Wolfsbane free to anyone who needs it. And we passed a law that stops people from being able to physically harm house elves, Narcissa said. That's amazing, Hermione said happily. Everyone finished dinner and went to the living room for some for some tea. And house elf brought everyone a cup and went back to the kitchen. Everyone was chatting a little and Molly and Arthur, Arthur eased up a little, a lot after the wine. And they engaged with, with uh, engaged both Narcissa and Draco in conversation. So Draco, what do you want to, to uh, what job do you want to have? Arthur asked him. I've been thinking about selling potion ingredients. I like I like to garden, and we have a lot of amazing plants that I have I learned to grow. I want to sell it to a vendor. Draco answered happily. He was being he was. Ben, he's been read a lot about a whole... He's been reading a lot. Think! <laughs> a whole bunch of, of different plants and how to grow them during the school year. He was sure he was going to pass his herbology and potions exams. What do you want to do, Dr- Harry? Narcissa asked. She just gave him a warm smile and Harry sat set his tea down. I'm not sure, so sure. I thought of becoming an or but I've had enough excitement for to last a lifetime, so I was thinking about ho- opening a shop, maybe. Harry said, Narcissa nodded her head. Well, I'm sure you're going to figure everything out. You're a smart boy, Narcissa assured. There was a moment of silence after the conversation ended. Harry took his chance to give Her- uh, Draco his present. Draco... Draco, I got you something. I wanted I wanted to see you open it instead of sending it to you. Harry told him. He pull he pulled a dark green velvet box out of his pocket and gave it to Draco. Oh, Harry, you didn't have to, Draco said. He opened the box and pulled out the necklace. Uh he got the one with the 
smaller circle in filled in the circle with the smaller filled in circle okay harry pulled his necklace out of his shirt and held it it's a pair he said draco clasped the necklace the necklace on and harry held the hollow circle i got this for you since you complete me harry said he i'm gonna throw up of all this cuteness He moved the pendant closer to Draco's and the two attached each other and became a bigger circle. I love it. Thank you so much. Draco thanked thanked him and gave him a kiss. Although they stopped when they realized who was watching. Harry, um, Harry awkwardly coughed, looking to the others, and then the clock. <clears throat> uh, uh, it's getting awfully late. I, uh, I think we should go back before it turns midnight. Harry suggested. It was 11.45. Molly agreed and stood up. Thank you so much for having us over. The dinner was lovely, and it was nice talking to you and to Draco. Her- Molly thanked her. She shook she shook uh, Narcissa's hand. Anytime. It was great to have you over and properly meet. Narcissa smiled, and she said, she said goodbye to everyone and gave Harry a he a hug goodbye. Every time you'd like, um, any time you like to come by, just flow. Narcissa offered. Harry said goodbye to her and kissed Draco goodbye. Bye, love. Good night. Harry said. Good night. Draco said back. Everyone filed back into the flow and flowed home in in two groups. A couple of seconds later, everyone was back in the burrow. So, how was it? Harry asked. He was anxious. He hoped Molly and Arthur liked it. I think Narcissa is a lovely lady, and you seem to love Draco a lot, Molly said. Draco is definitely a changed boy. I'm glad you are happy with him, Arthur added. George patted Harry on the back. He's a good bloke, was all he said. Everyone headed upstairs to their room after they said goodbye to Hermione. She had to head home before her parents started to freak out. But uh, do you think Molly and Arthur actually like Draco? They never really said, Harry asked. Ron um, asked Ron when they got upstairs. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure they don't they don't hate him and that's all that matters harry told him and ron told him why did i say harry ron told him he was being honest and the two were um the two were hard to read sometimes though ron never had the skill of reading people in the first place the two changed out of their clothes and went to bed (laughs) <laughs> this is from Alex. Yo, I'm so happy. Christmas morning is going to come. Then I might finish the uh, finish the year in a chapter or two. And then do the thing I'm really thinking, the idea of a sequel. By the way, I hope you like the reference. The bracelets are supposed to be the Elder's Wand. The rings are supposed to be Resurrection Stones. Because of the rebirth and, and stuff. And the necklace was supposed to be the cloak. Because they are invincible. From Alex. That was really nice. I really enjoyed that. Um, Thank you for that, Alex. If you ever hear this, probably not. But um, I hope that you... Um, have a good time and you made more stories after this um i'm gonna end it here because i'm hungry and i want to eat i'm gonna stop it at an hour and thank you guys for watching it it was so fun reading this to you guys i don't know if a lot of people hear the ending of my um ending of my stories so i'm gonna say this to you guys I want you to comment down below what you ate this morning. And I'll see if a lot of people heard the end of what I said today. Well, guys, I enjoyed everything today. And 
and I have to thank you. It, it, this wouldn't be possible if you weren't in my life. You are all special, and you are all different, and you deserve everything. Be good people, because nobody likes to be bad. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>